Once we've got step one and step two out of the way, it's time to do step three. Step three is our test statistic. This is where we calculate our evidence. Step three has two portions. We have to calculate SE first, the standard error, which is our estimate of standard deviation. SE for a two proportion hypothesis test is always square root, my pooled proportion, times one minus my pooled proportion, times one over n1 plus one over n2. Plugging all of my values in here, I need to be really careful. Remember, my pooled proportion is going to be this 0.6404, 1 minus 0.6404, 1 over 402, plus 1 over 3147. I highly suggest you simplify at least this portion before you go ahead and plug into your calculator, just to prevent yourself from making silly mistakes. Once you've calculated this, you should get out, for your SE, 0.0254. After I find SE, the next thing I need to do is find my test statistic. In this case, it's going to be Z because I'm using proportion and not averages. My Z score for a two proportion hypothesis test is P1 hat minus P2 hat, that difference, divided by SE. Now, in reality, there's one other part on top here, and that is this right here is what actually happened, it's my actual value. Now, with any z-score or t-score, I always take the actual and subtract off my expected, right? Well, in this case, I'm expecting that my two proportions are equal. And if my two proportions are equal, when I subtract them, I should get a difference of zero, which means technically I'm subtracting zero off the top of this. But subtracting zero off the top of something doesn't change it, and so I actually just don't write that. I ignore it, which is why normally when we write it, we don't see this minus zero on the end. When we plug in our z-score, it's going to be 7.09, which is a ridiculously large z-score. In fact, it's going to be so large that when I go to do my p-value for my first step, it'll actually be off the table. And we've said before, any time a z-score is off the table, it means that our p-value is less than 0 0.0002. It's tiny. I don't have to double this because it's not a two-sided, which is what I would have if not equal to. It's a one-sided because I'm just looking at strictly greater than. Now I've got my p-value, the next step is to go ahead and reach my conclusion. The conclusion step involves comparing my p-value to my significance level of 0.05. In this case, my p-value is less than 0 0.0002, which means it's definitely less than 0.05. Because my p-value is less than 0.05, that means this happening is super unlikely. That is, if black and white adults in the US have the same opinion on this, my chances of getting samples like this is ridiculously small, which means my assumption is probably incorrect, which is why when this happens, we reject H0. This says that there is enough evidence for me to prove my alternative. In this case, there's enough evidence to say that, yeah, in fact, white adults are less likely to feel that political exchanges on social media allow us to investigate or express important issues that might not otherwise be talked about than black adults.